As soon as the boat arrived in Miami, it was a rush to get her unpacked, splashed, and motored up to Palm Beach where the masks had to be assembled and put on. From there, we only had a few days to get her sails on, her sailed up to Stewart, get ourselves all moved in, get all of our Florida family and friends aboard, and set sail for our first big adventure. The entire process was a bit stressful because we were racing our insurance deadline to be north of Hatteras, a solid 600 mile sail, all within a week of her first arriving to the port. But we did it. We had calm days and rough days. We pulled in for a night here or there, and we had our first anchor dragging experience. Are you starting a new fashion statement? <laughs> and continue knocking out miles until we arrived in New York. And for the first time in all of our years cruising up and down the East Coast, we brought our own boat through New York City. We want to share this experience through New York City with some of my family who have also lived most of their lives on Long Island. It was also their first time seeing our new boat and they were almost excited as we were when we first saw her. What's up, Jenny? That is nice looking. Oh my god. Oh. Okay, let's see. Can you get off without falling in? <laughs> Everyone's made it so far. <laughs> Great to see ya. <laughs> I lived on Long Island just under an hour from New York City most of my life. I would go into the city maybe just once a year for a holiday with our relatives or to see a show, but that was plenty for me because generally I'm not really a city person. Despite that, I will say it was an incredible experience motoring through one of the biggest cities in the world by boat. It was a completely different and relaxing way to see the Big Apple and we thoroughly enjoyed every moment of it. Okay guys, we're on a new boat. And did you think there wasn't gonna be any boat projects or boat work or anything? No, nope. well, if you did, you're wrong because today is the first thing we're going to add. And it is a water filter. So we don't super trust like new fiberglass tanks. We don't know like how they installed them or what kind of little flakes are kind of hanging around. So we've been using plastic jugs and refilling them with rainwater for the past like three weeks. And now we're finally going to be able to just flip a little button on the in the sink and have fresh drinking water. But not just having new fiberglass tanks, but also just in general, really uh, super clean drinking water is very important to us. Marina, where we might fill it up in the Bahamas or the Caribbean might be questionable. Our tanks might get a little bit dirty at some points and we just wanna make sure that the water we're actually drink drinking is as clean as possible. So in the future, we are also going to install a water maker. So we're not gonna be filling up at marinas very often, but still your tanks can get contaminated. Um, they can get start getting a little dirty. Uh, once in a while, you should be cleaning them and putting some bleach in there and stuff like that, but it happens. So important for us to make sure that the water that's coming out of the tap that we're drinking is as clean as possible. We've gotten a lot of comments about like, why didn't we just have the factory do the stuff like the water filter and the water maker and all of this stuff. And it's because we have brands that we trust that we've used on past boats or the camper or whatever that we really, really like. And those weren't necessarily options. So we just wanted to make sure we got what we did know works really well. And that is something like the water filter and the water maker. We just liked what we had and we wanted the same thing. So today we're installing the Seagull X1F, probably one of the best, if not the best, 
uh, water filter on the market for boats and RVs. Um, and then we did have this in the truck camper and we loved it. So we're gonna install it again right here. All right, so we have our filter canister and they let us know they already put a filter in for us um, on this one. This is an extra filter. This was what it looks like. And then I went to the store, I already bought a T fitting. Uh, so this is a 15 millimeter tech, uh, PEX T, which the water lines we have on this boat are 15 millimeter PEX. And then we have our, have our faucet. And then our two water lines, uh, one to go in to the cartridge, and then one to go out directly to the faucet. And then these two components I also bought separately. We'll T into the existing water line, um, with one of these hoses and then it'll go into this and then it'll go out of this into the faucet and we'll mount this stuff and that's the plan. A bit of a mess down here right now. So Sierra already turned the water pump off. Excuse the garbage. Just take this and put this in here for now. So we're under our sink. This is what we're looking at. These are our two water lines. We'll just tee into this one. I have to mount the uh, cartridge somewhere. Maybe here. Yeah, probably right there. Perfect. Moment of truth. Let's turn this water switch. Turning that back on. Try to go this way. And Sierra's about to turn the water pump on. And hopefully we have no leaks. Oh, I got a little leak. Tiny little one. Where'd that come from though? I just saw one little drop. All right, I just pushed the pecs in a little bit further and I think we had one little drip that I saw and I think it was coming out of this one. I just pushed in a tiny bit further and I think we're good now. I don't see any drips. Keep an eye on it for a minute. I mean, it's fully pressurized right now, so. Okay guys, before we headed on our long trek north, we didn't really have time to like get all of our stuff set up where we wanted it, like our fishing poles and our surfboard. So that is today's project. We are trying to figure out the best spot to mount all of our fishing poles. And ideally we would like them inside. So it's not kind of like attracting people to say, ooh, like I want to take these things, but we don't really have enough room inside. So outside it is. Still not a huge fan of drilling holes in the brand new boat, but gotta do what you gotta do. Are you excited? Yeah. yeah it'll be really nice to get these things out of the way, so make that extra guest bump functional. And it's really nice 
when everything has its own home, really neat, neat spot for them to live and easy to access when we want to go fishing or whatever. The roof has a nice, nice curve to it, and this isn't matching the curve nicely with where the screw holes are. So we'll probably just put a bead of caulk here and just smooth it out nicely, and I think that'll kind of hide the, the waviness in there. When other rods are on, you can't really tell. Is it just me or did I just do this? <laughs> I feel like I just did all of this. You did. <laughs> So the boat came with um, a set of dock lines, but it's polypropylene line, and that's not good for dock lines. It's slippery and it's not as strong, and it looks really bad with all like the fraying pieces. We're making proper dock lines, and Sierra is an expert at it now because she did all the dock lines on Mountain Mist. I would not say I'm an expert. The hardest part for me is like this first part here, and then I get it, but. This is number five. <laughs> so she's doing an awesome job. So this is three strand nylon, what dock lines should be made out of. I mean, they could be double braid as well, but nylon. Just one of the many projects just to get this boat exactly how we want it with the exactly what gear we want on it. We bought this whole spool. It was like 10% off if you bought, but 600 feet or more. So we got 600 feet and we'll use um, a couple hundred feet on like our spare an a spare anchor road and on the main anchor road behind the chain. Um, so it will all be used. Here's Sierra's finished set of dock lines. She made four 40 foot lines and two 60 foot lines. And each of them have a nice eye splice on one end and just a regular just end of the line on the other end melted so it doesn't come apart. We're installing our Mantis bridle. We could have made a bridle out of the same line we made the dock lines out of, but um, we've had a few Mantis bridles and it's all made already for you. And they come with, uh, they already come with like the thimbles and the shackles, proper size shackles for where we're, we're attaching it. And then the um, chafe sleeve. So we've used a ton of Mantis stuff in the past, obviously love, love it all. So we are going to install the bridle right now. Finally, because we've been using like old thin dock lines for the bridle and like a soft shackle for the chain hook, but I have to like use a screwdriver to push the soft shackle through the chain every time. It's been such a pain in the butt. Just need a thinner soft shackle or proper setup. chain hook so we'll just uh, put a shackle on here and we'll have to wire seize all these we're putting uh, some stainless sometimes it's monel uh, monel or monel but this is stainless uh, seizing wire and we're putting it through this hole in the shackle pin and just so that it can never back itself out basically always do this on all important shackles. Sometimes we'll use a zip tie, but obviously definitely not as strong in the long run. But sometimes like at the mast base where we have a bunch of shackles for our blocks, zip ties are better because you don't have like sharp, potentially a sharp metal piece sticking out, even though I try to hide that as best I can. And they're easily uh, inspectable there at the mast base. So if one does break it, I can spot it pretty easy. Here, Metal. We'll do this on the shackle pins, on the shackles held to the crossbeam as well.
You can start going in, love. I'm almost done. Sierra spot we always check the water as soon as we turn on the engine so we had proper water flow as soon as we turned them on but a few minutes into motoring Sierra noticed some white smoke out of the exhaust and that's always a sign that uh, your engines either burning water or it's just hot and it's like water steaming in the uh, in the exhaust um, and sure enough the simple things are like a clogged strainer a clogged uh, intake where your wild water intake is coming in um, and then after that, a uh, uh, impeller, a bad impeller. So sure enough, got to replace the impeller because we got a broken fin. So, very simplest uh, solution. But it's like the worst case scenario when you see white smoke. Uh, oh, like if you see white smoke, the worst it could be is like a blown head gasket. Like you're getting coolant into your cylinders and it's burning, burning that coolant. But not today. Before we went any further, we had to get hauled quickly to do our 50 hour engine and sail drive service. You have to get hauled because you can only drain the gear oil out of the sail drives with the boat out of the water. Spaces on the boat and just trying to identify the systems. One of the things we had done was had a through hole put in and some pre plumbing and pre wiring for a water maker. Still trying to identify like some of the where the plumbing and wiring is exactly, but I haven't explored it every inch yet and just waiting on Seawind to get me that information. But I have found the through hole. So here it is it's a, a stainless steel a ball valve on a bronze through hole. So obviously, you should never be using dissimilar metals together, especially when they're in salt water and especially when they're under the water line of your boat. So that's no good in the first place, and we're already getting some pink and some corrosion. Uh, the pink indicates de-zincification, which happens when you have dissimilar metal on bronze. Um, bronze being the less noble metal, the stainless the bronze is going to start to, I believe, lose electrons and just corrode. Just trimming down the through hole uh, just to make sure it, it fits snug with the seacock on the other side but just to make sure absolutely sure we don't bottom out the threads I'm just because it's getting close to bottoming out the threads when you get it tight so I'm just making sure I'm just taking off a couple threads just to make sure we don't bottom out and get a really nice uh, tight connection between the two compressing on the hull so it's pretty obvious that they added this through hole over the existing bottom paint. So they like painted it first and then put the through hole in. So I'm scraping just the old sealant off, but also the old bottom paint off too. And then we'll clean it super good with acetone and then put the new through hole in. Just adding the adhesive sealant. Before anyone asks, this stuff is safe to use with plastic. Some are you're not supposed to use with plastic, although Marlon you can use pretty much anything it looks like except for like one or two products. And uh, and this stuff will cure in water as well. Um, so we'll be fine to launch in a couple hours. 
Yeah, one of our friends is a marine surveyor, and he's nice enough that we're able to like bounce ideas off of and just ask him questions, and he's able to give us like professional advice. So he's one of the ones who I was like, dude, is this as alarming to you as it is to me? And he's like, yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, I'm going to pop this in. I'm going to need you to hold it. Okay. All right, you guys, we got our new through hole in, Seacock on, threaded on, because we didn't have additional backing like here. I just got a, a proper Seacock that comes with this, you know, base that gets screwed into this surface of the hole. So we'll have to get a little cap for it for while we're not in use. And we'll have to put the water maker label back on. This will be the water maker intake when we finally hook up our water maker. Hopefully when we put it back in the water, it doesn't leak. We're changing out the sail drive gear oil right now. So this is part of our initial 50 hour engine service. And it's just important to do just really to check the oil, make sure there's no water intrusion into the sail drive and obviously to change the oil so we have better lubricating oil. Especially after break-in, the first 50 hours is like the break-in period, which, you know, there's going to be a little bit more metal wear. And little bits of metal. We were up in the air. We had heard that you could do this service yourself if you were competent, and I also heard that you couldn't. It would void your warranty. But I spoke with a... Ah! Dang it. Now i got to fish that plug out. Uh, I spoke to a couple Yanmar techs, um, actual Yanmar techs who do this service, and said, they said, no, you can do the service yourself. You just, just make sure you document it, save your receipts for like your oil and your filters and everything you did, your haul out probably, and uh, put it in the ship's log so it's all documented. Obviously, we have some photo and video footage as well. Do you see any chunks coming out of the No, it's not going to be chunks. It's going to be little bits of metal. Here, can you hold it so over like this? I'm gonna undo the plug on the inside and it'll really increase this oil flow. In addition to changing the sail drive gear oil, we also changed the engine oil, oil filters, and onboard fuel filters, as well as checking belt tension, all as part of the initial 50 hour service. Once we were done with all that, we were going back in the water. Good. You sure? Yeah. Good products? Yep. We got our 50 hour service done. We got that through hole replaced. Everything went super smooth. Such a relief when you get that maintenance done because, like, as you get closer and closer to that maintenance period, it's like a little bit of stress and, you know, a little bit of boat work that you know needs to get done. So it's, uh, it's just nice to get that done. Um, so we're good for another 100 hours at least. Something like that. So we are cruising now, finally on the move. Some immediate boat work needs to be done still, but nothing super immediate. We've got to install the water maker still. And we're cruising out. I guess we're technically in New England and Connecticut, but we're cruising out to the islands, out to Block and Nantucket. And we're super excited to get back out there, so can't wait. And I must say, we've been hauled out quite a few times at many different boat yards, and they took like super good care of making sure like the straps were in the right place and the metal things weren't hurting your boat or any of this stuff like sometimes you go to yard they pull you out and they kind of it feels like you're a little rush because they have people back to back um but they were super awesome and it was called what is it crockers crockers, crockers boat yard and there's not many boat yards along the east coast that can even haul out a 22 foot wide boat so the ones that are few and far between we do highly recommend them they did a great job with us so i want to show you guys real quick what we something i've been working on is our board rack up under here. It's still a bit of a prototype. Not exactly how I want it to be. I want it to be able to raise and lower it with the one line all together at once. Not really quite there yet, but figuring it out. I think we have too many boards in the first place. Um, but I want, while we're back here, I wanted to show you something that we haven't showed you before. And this is something that happened uh, in transit when this boat was on our way to us. As you know, like we portray this lifestyle how it really is and not just sunshine and happiness all the time. And as exciting as a brand new shiny boat is, it's not perfect. And one of the things that happened to this boat is in transit, it got a little bit of damage. 
So we're going through the claims process right now with the transit insurance that we had. I just want to show you a little bit of the damage that occurred because today we went and got another estimate and uh, they, from someone who's probably going to fix it up here in New England just because this is how um, it's lining up in terms of timing and finding someone who's capable of doing this job. It, basically what happened was uh, we had there was some sort of impact on the back of this coach roof during shipping. Um, and as a result, we have this crack that formed around this targa arch and a little bit back behind here as well. And just some cracking all along here. The, the, main, the main damage was done on the very back of this uh, coach roof. And it look, there was just some impacts. It looks like maybe they, they like back this boat up into a container or vice versa like container uh hit the back of this boat and it like took off the anchor line and stuff like that so definitely some solid fiberglass damage sea wind assures us that the main sail uh sheet track is through bolted into the targa so that is like, the main source of any significant load on this thing so we've been sailing with it we've sailed over a thousand miles so far and uh, it's fine but again, just some cosmetic damage that we've been trying to keep covered with shrink wrap tape. We didn't have it on today because we had to show the fiberglass repair guy the damage so he can give us an estimate and just check it out and everything. We're still able to sail. We're still able to use the boat, but it's still a pretty big, like, it's still a pretty big fiberglass repair, um, especially to do it right, to make it look perfect, factory, brand new, like it should. And, uh... And we've actually had a few fiberglass repair guys turn us down because it's a little bit too big of a job that they can handle on their own. Um, so we finally found someone who seemed really good, um, very confident and um, reputable. He thinks it's going to take around three weeks, which is... <gasps> like we just sailed all the way up here and now like <laughs> three weeks of our time is going to be spent in a boatyard. But if they can do it right, they can do it right. There's nothing we can do. It'll be fine. I was hoping it would only take two weeks, but yeah, he's he's saying three. Hopefully it's not more than three, like the way things kind of go in this world. It's just reality, but I think the important things to take away from this are make sure you have transit insurance. Um, you know, if you buy a brand new boat, the manufacturer with us, he when, you know, set us up with transit insurance through uh, Chubb, which is a very reputable marine insurance company and they offer this special transit insurance the other thing to take away especially is make sure you know and trust your dealer and or the person commissioning your boat because uh, when when scott and i were in miami and we first set eyes on the boat scott noticed that immediately i don't even know if i would have necessarily noticed it because he just knows what to look for so all of the uh track It's all shrink wrapped when it comes to so make sure there is it the shrink wrap looks perfect and he noticed it right away that there was some impact back there um and he made sure to point it out to the re the shipping company representative who was there with us and we documented it significantly with pictures and video um so that we can go to the insurance company and we just have a ton of documentation but if you get someone who doesn't have as much attention to detail and they miss something like that like it just makes the claims process so much harder. So just make sure you have someone who pays uh, a significant amount of attention to detail and is very thorough and will pick up on uh, something like that right there um, upon delivery. Because if you do miss it and too much time goes by, like that's, uh, yeah, that's, they're not going to cover that. They're, the insurance company is going to deny that claim. Like you didn't document it when, you know, at the time of delivery, at the time that the boat arrived in port when we first like put our money on this i was a little nervous because we've only had old boats before and we can be like a little hard on stuff but because we know we can fix it but this is brand new shiny and i was so nervous about like the first scratch on the boat but on the bright side we didn't do it <laughs> the shipping container did so <laughs> the first scratch has been done <laughs> does that make you feel better that it wasn't us yeah it does <laughs> and uh, when it comes down to it it's a boat and anything on a boat can be repaired so like it's it's really it, it is a big job and especially when we want it to look perfect anything on a boat can be fixed so i didn't talk about this like fully in detail but for months i was having terrible 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 nightmares about all the things that could happen on this boat during shipping like it catching on fire and containers falling on it and smushing it or us unwrapping it and it's all a big pile of rust that looks like it's been sitting on the bottom of the ocean so the fact that this is 
the only damage and it could have been much worse and it's covered and that, that's the other takeaway it could have been much <laughs> much worse yeah so yeah it sucks but we'll figure it out and we're still chugging along